Bokrama Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamenim. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his column titled Demoralization, Passivity and Hope Part 2. So in outlining the importance of hope, you emphasize the element of uncertainty. How does that work? Well, this concept of hope is very difficult. I've not been studying it for very long. But what I understand is that we look around us and we say, there's nothing we can do. I feel very depressed and demoralized. Look how it's all turned out. You, as someone who was in the struggle, must be so disappointed and depressed and what, what, what. Now, what I learn from studying hope is, first of all, we often do not pay attention to uh, small things in our environment which have the potential of becoming transformatory. They may be small, and you may be able to involve a small number of people in getting involved in, for example, cleaning up your neighborhood. Uh, when you get involved in cleaning up the neighborhood, it's a job that the state should be doing. But if, while the state is not doing it, you still demand that they do it, and you enlist people who live in the area, you build a common sense of pride in your environment and of rebuilding the environment in a way that makes it a decent place for people to live, for children to be brought up safely, for all of us to drive safely with potholes fixed up and things like that. So hope is not a forecast of something that will definitely happen. It's an opportunity, an opportunity that may turn out okay and may not turn out okay. I gave the example in the 1960s of the banning of the ANC and the PAC. It looked like there was nothing. And they rebuilt slowly with a vision of the future. And sometimes it takes very long, but these people had a sense of hope that things would come right if they did this, that, and the other. And it's not just that you have hope. You have to do things. You're not passive. Like optimism means things will turn out okay, and you don't have to do anything about it. Or pessimism is they, they'll turn out badly, but you don't have to do anything about it. Now, if we want hope to be realized, we ourselves must act. You also now refer to history and memory as factors that uh, create hope and can be drawn on in realizing hope. How does that now work in politics, Professor? Well, I think George Orwell said something like, he who controls the past also controls the present. It's very important to understand history, to understand the lessons of our history, how in various periods in the past, we thought that nothing could be done. And from some unexpected quarter or from a quarter that we had relied on in the past, forces were marshaled to achieve a range of things. And in the book that I was using by Rebecca Solnitz, there are a lot of examples of things that were unexpected becoming first small groups of people, then mass movements. And you can see now in uh, New York City, in other parts of the United States, people occupying the main railway station in New York, informally organized things involving rabbis and people like this against the Israeli attacks on Gaza. Now, that's something that was not on the maps, but the people who were concerned could see people are concerned. How do we harness this concern about genocide in Gaza and harness it in a way that can uh, put the U.S. government on a spot and restrain it from assisting the Israelis in the killings? There, last Yesterday, there were already 8,300 deaths of which some 3,000 were children. And something is being done about it all over the world. 
in the United Kingdom, in France, in Latin America, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's very interesting uh, example how hope comes from a quarter that you haven't necessarily expected. You also now say hope uh, is simply an opportunity, but we still have to do the work. Can you please explain, Professor, where we find this opportunity? And why are you dismissive of elections when they are a tried and tested method in politics? Well, you have to look around you to find the opportunity. And sometimes the opportunity is in an unexpected place. It's coming from in South Africa at the moment, we have situations where organizations that were not mentioned in the media uh, 10 years ago, like Gift of the Givers, maybe they were mentioned, but they were mentioned in a very small way. And what Gift of the Givers does is uh, replicated by a whole lot of smaller acts of kindness by individuals and groups of individuals throughout the country. And you see all over the country, people are uh, cleaning up the streets, fixing potholes, trying to find water for those without water and food for those without food. And the government should be doing this, but they're stepping in there. But it's also got another important component. It is building a relationship between people. Instead of us all being separate, atomized individuals, unconnected with one another, we say, you are a human being, I am a human being, I exist because of you, sort of thing that Ubuntu connotes, but now putting it into practice and making it meaningful. On elections, you ask me if I'm dismissive, why I'm dismissive of elections. Well, you know, um, where are the elections going to get us to? The ANC may get 45%, may get 51%. And if you look at what Cyril Ramaphosa said the other day, it's not at all convincing. You know, it's not only him, he's obviously not got advisors who are telling him this is not working. In order to give successful leadership for which we should vote, People need to listen and hear what the problems are and direct resources towards those problems instead of them being used for enrichment. And there's little to show since the departure of the Guptas to suggest that that period of pillage of the state coffers has come to an end. So that I personally don't know, I don't say don't vote or that I will vote or not vote. However, I'm not convinced that that is the solution at this point in time. I don't have a solution because I'm just sitting here behind a computer. I don't have a 100,000 followers. So I don't have the capacity to myself uh, create that solution. But I think the solution requires the involvement of a number of different sectors of society who are unhappy. This morning I was reading, about, or last night, about business being very unhappy with government at the moment. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna in conversation with Polity discussing his column titled Demoralization, Passivity and Hope, Part 2.